How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about Lucid, Mullen, SoFi, and as well as Palantir. We had some great news to come through the EV sector. We had Walmart that's going to be purchasing 4,500 EV vans from Canoe, ticker symbol Go EV, and they also have the opportunity or the option to purchase another 10,000 vehicles. So of course, as far as for the EV sector, there are a lot of plays that were able to benefit from this. But aside from all of that, we're gonna be going over the charts, we're gonna be taking a look at the short interest information, and if you're new to this channel, always remember, we have timestamps down below inside the description. I've been also getting those down inside of the comments for you guys. I'm not here to waste your time. I'm here to give you value. So let's get into those videos right now. So we're going to take a look at the chart from Mullen. Let's see how it performed on the day. So I ended up closing at $1.11, being down 9.02%. On the low, it tested $1.09, and then on the high, testing $1.21. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 42.707 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 64.87. 9 million shares. So you can see we have below average volume on the day and we've seen a pullback in the stock. Now when we take a look at our chart, we're using the two hour chart. Here's what I want to bring to your attention. You remember when I was telling you guys about that level at $1.10? So look where we close. We close at $1.11. As far as for the low where we tested at 109, the fact that we're able to stick in this area, you're going to want to see this continue to hold going into tomorrow. If it decides to break through this level, that's where we can see Mullen pulling back to 103 and down to one dollar so please add that to your homework and if we break above one dollar we know that the next key level is right here around 95 cents now if you want to see a move back to the upside we ended up seeing a high of one dollar and 21 cents so of course and that's lined up right where we have the 200 ema we need to get above it that is very clear because you could see when we got to 121 we had some strong selling pressure right there so if we can get above 121 and break out to the upside that's where i want to see if mullet can get back to around one dollar and thirty cents we know how key this level is because if we can get that break and move up further that's where we can see if we can get to 152 which is the area you want to keep an eye on if you're a bull inside of this play now let's move on so we're going to take a look at the recent short interest information from mullen so the off exchange short volume ratio is at 57.05 percent and then for the off exchange short volume it is just over 38.88 million shares scrolling down on the page is short shares availabilities at 400 50,000 updated 27 minutes ago and then for the short ball fee rate it is at 32.65 percent when we take a look at the history of the short volume we could see for the close of the 8th it was at 50.50 and then for the close of the 11th being at 57.05 so it has gone up a bit and then taking a look at the short interest percentage of the float being at 13.56 percent and growing Mullen does have short squeeze potential so we're going to take a look at the chart for Lucid. Let's see how it performed on the day. So I ended up closing at $19.33, being up 4.32%. On the low, it tested $18.25, and then on the high, testing $19.46. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see that we traded at 12.399 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 15.21 million shares. So we have below average volume on the day, but we saw some strength in the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is a two hour chart, remember when I was telling you guys about these levels here and you want to see a break above $19.34? No surprise is why we saw continuous resistance around this level. That's why I'm saying a lot of value in these videos. I hope you're adding it to your homework when you're trading it. But aside from that, you can see that we pulled back and we closed at $19.33. So going into tomorrow, if you're a bull, you want to see some upside, we want Lucid to make a move to $20. That is the next area of resistance also known as a psychological area. If we could break above $20 and the next resistance level to keep an eye on will be right here around $20.61. Now, if we decide to pull back, you can see on the low we tested $18.25. So if we fall below $18.74, then there's a high likelihood we will revisit these areas. And let's say, for example, the market decides to pull back big time due to the fact that CPI numbers come in real hot, then I could see Lucid testing $18 and then also make making a move down here to 17.50. So add that to your homework as well. So we're gonna take a look at the recent short interest information for Lucid. So the off exchange short volume ratios at 
27%. And then for the Office Change short volume, it is just over 2.49 million shares. Scrolling down on the page, the short shares availability is at 300,000, updated 25 minutes ago. And then for the short ball fee rate, it is at 18.68%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume, we can see for the close of the 8th, it was at 45.83. And then for the close of the 11th, being at 60.57. So that's a big increase right there. And then taking a look at the short interest percentage of the float being at 23.39%, Lucid does continue to have short squeeze potential. So we're going to take a look at the chart for SoFi. Let's see how it performed on the day. So it ended up closing at $6.04, being up 0.50%. On the low, it tested $5.90, and then on the high, testing $6.23. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 17.88 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 25.949 million shares. So we did have below average volume on the day, but we did see some strength in the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is a two hour chart, I want you guys to pay attention to these levels here. So we can see as far as for the high of the day, since we did get to $6.23, we want to get a move above $6.30. And we can break above this level. That's where SoFi can have the potential to actually get to around $6.76, where it'll be the next area of resistance. As far as support is concerned, we can see that it's holding up quite well right here at this $5.89 range. It did test $5.90 on the low, so that's one thing you want to keep in mind. So if it decides to pull back going into tomorrow, will $5.90 hold? If $5.90 does not hold, then we can see SoFi pulling back to all the way over here to around $5.67. And if it loses $5.67, that's where we can start testing support where we were last week, right here around $5.18. So add that to your homework in regards to the downside, especially we end up having a strong sell-off tomorrow. So overall, it will definitely be an interesting day going into tomorrow, but keep an eye on those levels that I pointed out to you guys. Let's move on. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for SoFi. So scrolling down on the page, green rows indicate new positions, while red rows indicate closed positions. So we see the filings for July the 12th. We have three institutions or hedge funds that have closed out their positions. And we also have F&Y Investment Advisors, LLC, that went in with some calls of a value of 1,750 shares. We see Xane Derivatives that purchased 142 shares and 180 Wealth Advisors LLC that purchased 11,825 shares. We also see Gradient Investment LLC that purchased 42 shares and Caliber Wealth Management LLC that purchased 43,851 shares. And another one to actually take notice of is Anderson Hoglon and Co that purchased 287,190 shares. Now, when we take a look at the short interest, the off exchange short volume ratio is at 43.24%. And then for the off exchange short volume, it is just over 3.22 million shares. Scrolling down on the page, the short shares availability is at 10 million, updated 24 minutes ago. And then for the short borrow fee rate, it is right at 2%. Taking a look at the history of the short volume, we can see for the close of the 8th, it was at 54.96. And then for the close of the 11th, being at 43.24. And then taking a look at the short interest percentage of the float being at 18%, SoFi does have short squeeze potential. So we're going to take a look at the chart for Palantir. Here, let's see how it performed on the day. So it ended up closing at $9.49, being down 0.73%. On the low, it tested $9.27, and then on the high, testing $9.96. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 42.691 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 40.887 million shares. So we had above average volume on the day, and we've seen a slight pullback in the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is a two-hour chart, I want you guys to pay attention to some key levels here. So we ended up seeing a low at 9.27, and we could see in the past this used to be a prior area of resistance. So knowing that it made quite the strong move since this week has started and it has sold off, you want to see going into tomorrow if this 9.30 level can hold. If it does not hold, then Palantir can pull 
back to $9. And if it sells off even further, you want to see if support can hold up around $8.72. As far as for the upside is concerned, it saw a high at $9.96. So of course, $10 is a psychological area. If we get a break above this level, then we want to see if Palantir can reclaim back up here to 1006. If it's able to do that, then it can make a move to 1038. So those are the levels that you want to be aware of. Pay attention to the market conditions. But from what I'm seeing so far, $9.30 is an area you really want to hold if you're a bull in this play and you're looking for a move to the upside. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for Palantir. As we scroll down further on the page, green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. So we can see with the recent filings we have here for July the 12th, we have Koshinki Asset Management Inc. that closed out their position as well as West Oak Capital LLC. We see for the July the 11th, we have Minot Wealth Management LLC that purchased 12,580 shares. Keep in mind, this is just the filing date. We also have a closing position from Wedmount Private Capital and we have Covington Capital Management that purchased 24,056 shares. Now, when we take a look at the short interest, the off-exchange short volume ratio is at 41.28% and then for the off-exchange short volume, it is just over 7.35 million shares. Scrolling down on the page, the short shares availability is at 10 million updated 21 minutes ago and then for the short ball fee rate, it is at 0.26%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume, we can see for the close of the 8th, it was at 36.68 and then for the close of the 11th being at 41.28. So it has gone up a bit and then when we take a look at the short interest percentage of the float being only at 6%, Palantir doesn't have short squeeze potential. So before I close this video out, let's do a quick recap on the stocks that I covered. As far as for SoFi, we know that the key level that it needs to get to is at $6.30. But you also want to see support holding up at least around $6 or to be exact, around $5.90. So if it decides to break through $5.90, that's where you can start seeing some weakness. And as far as for Palantir, the key levels that you want to watch is around $9.30 and as well as $10.06. If it can make a move to $10.06 and break above that, that is bullish. But if it decides to pull back and go below $9.30, it did test the low around $9.27. That's where you could start seeing some weakness. So add that to your homework. And then for Mullen, the key level that you want to see it get to is above $1.21. If it's able to do this and we have buying pressure coming in, that's where you want to see it make that move not only to $1.30, but make that move to $1.40 and start trading in that $1.50 range. Again, the most bullish case scenario. If you guys remember from taking a look at my previous videos in the charts on Mullen, we came back to that key area of support around $1.10. So going into tomorrow, if we decide to break below that, especially going below $1.09, that's where we can see Mullen testing $1. And you guys already know already, that is a price range. We want to see bulls buy this thing up and then run it back up all over again. And then as far as for Lucid is concerned, we know that $20 is a psychological area for this play. Anytime it makes a move there, it tends to get sold off. So this is a repeated pattern and I want to make sure that you're paying attention, especially if we go into tomorrow and Lucid decides to test 20 bucks and depending on what the market conditions are, you could take advantage of some puts, but again, you want to make sure that you're being patient about that. As far as for weakness and if it decides to pull back to the downside, then I could see support wanting to start kicking in at least around 18 and it could pull back further to $17.50. And why am I mentioning this? We have the CPI numbers that are going to be coming out tomorrow or you might be catching this video the day of. So it's going to be on July the 13th at 8.30 a.m. EST. So all these levels that I told you guys about to the downside, and if they break through these levels, you have an opportunity to make some really good money on these plays. Of course, I can't give you guys financial advice, but this is why I say when you watch my videos, add it to your notes if you're planning to trade that particular stock. And I have been talking about CPI for quite some time, and I also did give you guys the update saying that as far as CPI is concerned, the market is known for selling off the day before, and that's exactly what it did today. So again, make sure you're prepared. You always want to have a trading plan before you go ahead and push that buy button. This is essential, especially if you're trying to see success inside of these markets. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.